Hello everyone. Our topic for today is COPD. That stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. Now, let me start with the definition of COPD first. So, COPD is a common, preventable, treatable disease that is characterized by persistent respiratory symptoms and airflow limitations. That is due to airway and or, or alveolar abnormalities usually caused by significant exposure to nauseous particles or gases. This is a standard definition. You need to remember that COPD has two parts, bronchitis and emphysema. We will study about each of them individually. The COPD also has a mix of both sometimes. It can be majorly bronchitis and minorly emphysema or vice versa. The most important factor in COPD is smoking. So the history of smoking plays a very important role in COPD. The diagnosis of COPD depends on three important things. The symptoms, the risk factor, the major one is the smoking and the spirometry. It is useful in people with symptoms. Now talking about the risk factors, you have host factors, tobacco, occupational, indoor and outdoor pollutants. Now, let's start with the first component that is bronchitis. So, chronic bronchitis. How do you define if a person has chronic bronchitis? So, there will be a history of 3 months of cough plus sputum per year for 2 consecutive years. This is a very important point that it will be for 2 consecutive years. Moving on to the pathophysiology. Let us understand how this all happens. The trigger, I told you, the most important trigger is smoking. Then you have pollution, indoor and outdoor. You have environmental smoke and occupational smoke. So what actually happens is that the, squam the squamous metaplasia of the bronchial mucosa. So the squamous metaplasia leads to increase in goblet cells. This leads to submucosal edema, which causes lymphocytic infiltration so when the lymphocytes come in it causes intraalveolar fibrosis now when you look at this diagram you can see very clearly these important points so there's mucus hypersecretion there's goblet cell hyperplasia which leads to mucus hypersecretion there are neutrophils in the sputum then you have increase in number of macrophages increase in number of CD8 plus lymphocytes. Then, you need to remember that there is no basement membrane thickening. And I told you, it all starts with the squamous metaplasia of epithelium. So, the uh, index that you need to remember regarding bronchitis is the read index. In the read index, how do you calculate it? It is mucus gland layer divided by the thickness of wall between the basement membrane and cartilage. So, You'll see the basement membrane and you'll see the cartilage over here. The thickness here, that will be the denominator and the numerator will be mucus gland layer thickness. Now, normal read index is less than 0 0.4. When it is more than 0 0.4, that means the mucus gland layer is increasing. There is more mucus gland layer. So, if there's, a, if there's increase in mucus gland layer, that means there's going to be increase in production of mucus. Now, We'll talk about the second component that is emphysema. So how is emphysema caused? So usually in our body, there is a balance between antiproteases and proteases. But in emphysema, this balance is lost. So normally the proteases are neutrophil elastase, protease 3, cathepsins and serine proteases. And the antiproteases are alpha-1 antitrypsin, inhibitors of serine proteases, secretory leukoprotease inhibitors, tissue inhibitor of matrix metalloprotease and elastin. Now what happens in emphysema, either the proteases will increase or the antiproteases will decrease. I think you've heard about this already, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So this plays a very important role and this is the most important one. Now further moving on, in emphysema you have an oxidative stress because of the imbalance. There is increase in free radical and decrease in antiprotease. Now you can see that these free radicals 
because decrease in antiprotease, activation of nuclear factor kappa beta, which in turn causes activation of interleukin 8 and which causes neutrophil recruitment. These free radicals also cause plasma leak, increased mucus secretion and bronchoconstriction. These will in turn lead to respiratory symptoms. You can also see this diagram. I told you that the cigarette smoking is a very important factor that plays a role in COPD. So the cigarette smoking and other irritants, they affect the epithelial cells and they activate the CD8 lymphocytes. They also activate the alveolar macrophages, which in turn activate several other factors and finally activate the neutrophil. This neutrophil releases the proteases. So the proteases increase in the body and the antiprotease decrease in the body causes this problem. This protease increase further leads to mucus hypersecretion and alveolar wall destruction. So mucus hypersecretion, you know that it's chronic bronchitis. I told you that bronchitis is mainly about mucus formation. That is why we have the read index for bronchitis. And the emphysema is all about the alveolar wall destruction. So proteases cause these effects. Now, you can see this is the normal lung and this is the emphysematous lung. You can see that the normal architecture of the alveoli this is completely lost and broken. So that is why we say that the emphysema component has alveolar wall destruction. Now, emphysema can be due to two mechanisms. That is dynamic compression of airway and the damage to alveolar septa. So when we have two alveoli, there is a septa that keeps, there is a septa between them that keeps them together and causes enough spacing and is required for the proper architecture of the alveoli. Now in emphysema, there can be a damage to this and the alveoli are under no control. So this causes problem. This causes collapse because if you see, this keeps the alveoli taut and open. If I remove this bone, you can see they can come together and they'll relapse. You know, they'll go back. This way the damage to the alveolar septa can lead to decrease in airway ventilation. Now subtypes of emphysema. You have sentry SNR, pan SNR, paraseptal, irregular. The sentry SNR involves the respiratory bronchiole. It is the most common one in smokers. You see here, from here you can see respiratory bronchiole, alveolar duct, alveolar sacs. So from here, the sentry SNR will affect the respiratory bronchioles and this is most commonly seen in smokers. The pan SNR will, the pan -SNR will involve the entire SNR. And you can, the main reason for pan SNR type is uh, it's seen in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The paraseptal, it's near the septal area. In irregular, you can see there will be some component of paraseptal and sentry SNR. So in sentry SNR, you, two important things you need to remember. Uh, is that it is common in smokers and it usually involves the upper lobe. So there's lung reduction surgery and it usually involves the upper lobe. So the lung reduction surgery actually benefits in sentry SNR. In pan SNR, the two points are it is common in alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency and it most commonly involves the lower lobe. And the lung reduction surgery has no benefit here. Now the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency can also be genetic or chromosomally related. Uh, on chromosome 4, you can see that there's a gene present. If it's misfolded or absent, it causes the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. I can go into the details of this, but I'll just explain it briefly. So, if we look at the gene, it has a M portion and the S portion. So, and the Z portion, there can be multiple combinations of it. So, if a normal, in a normal person, you will have MM. So that means there's 100% activity of alpha 1 antitrypsin. In the S is for partial synthesis. So in a SS, there'll be, complete, there'll be partial synthesis. And in the ZZ, it's the completely misfolded type. So there'll be very less. And then you have a null one in which there'll be no production of alpha 1 antitrypsin. 
they can also be a combination of MS or SZ, but these are the broad combinations. Now, uh, you need to remember that in MM, each of these contributes to 50%, S contributes to 30%, and the Z contributes to 7 to 10%. So, 7 to 10 by this, 7 to 10 by this, so approximately 15 to 20%. Now, the points that suggest to evaluate alpha-1 antitrypsin level. Now, the points that suggest are that the COPD in less than 45 years of age, there is a strong family history, basal R predominance, so, and his, no history of smoking. So, I told you in smokers, uh, you can see the sentry SNR type. And, uh, and the upper lobe is involved. So, these are the points that you need to remember. Now, in emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So, in emphysema, we know that there is alveolar destruction. So, the number of lobules decrease, the net surface area for gas exchange or transfer decreases and the diffusion zone decreases. I told you that the emphysema is more about alveolar destruction, whereas chronic bronchitis is more about mucus secretions, mucus overproduction, and all of that. So in emphysema, there will be decrease in diffusion zone, decrease in gas transfer. So diffusion zone decrease, that means there will be hypoxemia. That means low O2 in our body. And decrease in gas transfer. But you need to remember that the, uh, the carbon dioxide has a very good affinity with hemoglobin. So carbon dioxide can still diffuse. So carbon dioxide will be diffusing out, but the O2 won't be coming in. So there will be type 1 respiratory failure. That means the PaO2 will drop, but the CO2 will be normal. So your body is throwing out the carbon dioxide, but it's not taking in the oxygen as it should normally. In chronic bronchitis, you'll see air trapping. When you inspire, there's a negative suction. So basically, you, if you see, this is the airway. When you try to inspire... There's always a negative suction that causes this inspiration. In open airway, air comes in, but expiration CO2 is trapped. Now, why is this trapped? So, when you try to expirate, the positive pressure here also closes this airway. So, the CO2, when it tries to go out, it is unable to do so because of the extreme positive pressure. So, there will be expiratory wheeze because the patient is trying forcefully to push the CO2 out of the body. So in this, there will be a type 2 respiratory failure. Now, you see this picture. In this picture, you can see very clearly that in chronic bronchitis, there is inflammation and excess mucus. And in the emphysema, the alveolar membranes break down. Now, the clinical features. Cuff and sputum, I told you in chronic bronchitis, 3 months, 2 executive years. Yes. Then in dyspnea is more common in emphysema and the cough and uh, sputum is more common in bronchitis and the V's uh, I told you expiratory V's you can see uh, expiratory V's here yeah in chronic bronchitis so there will be weight loss common in emphysema there will be muscle weakness respiratory distress depression clinical examination so in clinical examination in severe cases you will see the tripod posture now in tripod posture a patient sits or stands leaning forward and supporting the upper body with hands on the knees or some other surface. So basically the person is leaning forward because he's not able to breathe properly. So this helps him in breathing properly and getting the amount of air he wants. Then you can also see for cyanosis, tachypnea, tachycardia, barrel chest, breath sounds, percussion, you will see hyper resonance and liver dullness is shifted a little down. Now, why are lymphocytes patients called pink puffers? Like blue bloaters, they also have trouble oxygenating, but the bodies compensate for this by increasing the respiratory rate. So, what this does is it ensures that the tissues are adequately oxygenated. But because they're breathing so fast, this makes the skin look pink. So, that is why they're called pink puffers, whereas bronchitis patients are called blue bloaters. Now, the age difference you can see bronchitis occurs in a younger age group and emphysema in an older age group dyspnea is more common i told you in emphysema cough is more common in bronchitis along with sputum then if you you know that if there's sputum the chances of infection so infections are common in bronchitis then the core pulmonary is common in uh, chronic bronchitis 
and in chest radiography large heart will be seen in chronic bronchitis and chronic bronchitis we have co2 retention so in co2 retention what did i tell you type 2 respiratory failure where is it yes so in emphysema the elastic recoil will be low why is it low because i told you there's a septal uh, septal destruction so the inter alveolar septum is gone so there will be plastic recoil will be low and if they have a small heart you can see these images the pink puffers and the blue bloaters you can see the tripod posture that is it for COPD thank you